another surf report, another week. How was everybody's boom week? Big display of fireworks, freedom ringing, but uh, overall last week was about feeling the excitement, anticipation, I think. Oh man, it was big for me. Wondering if it was big for you. As we get into position, we have that T-square on Uranus continuing, but we also have a new moon. So we've got some major energies, some continuing and some new, new and fresh. It's a new cycle in Cancer. All right, summary slide. Sir, uh, first of all, this is for July 8th through the 14th. And at the bottom of the astrology piece here, this is represented by the burgundy circle, the big circle, because there's so much energies here. It's the bigger of the three circles. And we're trying to figure out the overlap of the energies. And uh, in the astrology, we have the T-square on Uranus. We have a lot of retrograde planets. We have a Sun opposed Pluto. That's going to be sort of an ego sacrifice at the time that the new moon is happening in Cancer. And all that's going to pose some opportunities with, uh, oh, by the way, this is going to be really cool. How you, You're going to see how the Uranus T-square is connected to the new moon. It's pretty cool. It's a, connected with a sextile, so it's a, it's a, there's an opportunity there. Two big energies, two opposing energies, in my opinion, uh, of the same continuum. So on this summary slide, we're heading towards this overlap right in the middle. We're inside of the astrology completely. The dream bot is the green circle, and that's sort of, I don't know, it's not really clear. There's an optical illusion in there. That's, that's pretty easy. That's the Uranus T-square. But the other one is a social alignment. So it's getting together. But, but in the context of uh, being responsible for or having somebody responsible for yourself. So it's like leading and following, that sort of thing. So that's a direct overlap of the new moon, as we'll talk about. But then the I Ching says nourishment. And um, in nourishment, it's being responsible for someone else. It's um, helping someone else. That is a direct inference or metaphor to cancer. So out the window goes the, what I thought was going to be the youthful folly of uh, Mars and Venus coming together. That's part of the Uranus T-square. We'll talk about that. And that energy is going to be there, but it's not number one. Number one is this little overlap here and it's the need to nurture. It's sort of the feeling to be responsible for someone else. But it has to do with an interaction with others. And that's the feeling. This is the influence. By the way, um, as we go through here towards the end, um, there's I've got a massive extra slide for the solution. So you're not going to want to miss the solution. That's always towards the end. The solution is how should I act? How should I behave this week in order to maximize the energies afforded to us? Okay. So with that, I'm going to actually skip the dream bot until the uh, end. And I'm going to start with some pretty cool announcements. Hang on, let's get started now. Okay, first off, here is my anticipated excitement um, came uh, during the week. It was not two days ago. It was uh, more like three or four days ago. But the certificate package from IACT, which is the International Association of Counselors and Therapists, uh, finally got my certification for hypnotherapy as a hypnotherapist. as a long ordeal, long process, uh, lots of hours with the supervisors and whatnot. But I am now certified with the IACT for hypnotherapy. So just thought I'd point that out and to know more about the services that we're offering. It's innerzension.com. I have uh, Angie's just about into the training. And so, you know, that same path will have another therapist 
with us shortly. Well, not shortly, but eventually. Next, Darla. Man, I... And all the other folks who have uh, donated, I'm sorry, I got behind on thanking and um, recognizing you all. But Darla in Virginia, thank you for your donation. She says, "Kick-ass surf report. I indeed, I will have, I will indeed have an obnoxious fourth." Well, how was it, Darla? Was it obnoxious? It was obnoxious here in Arkansas. It, it, there's no need to go anywhere for a, like a show. It was a show here. It looked like a war zone. Uh, fireworks everywhere. It was awesome. Um, natural wisdom, big shout out. Uh, thank you for sharing on uh, rumor mill. And what I notice is um, when I last checked, it was well over 1300 views. And yet I, I think YouTube is refusing to acknowledge the views um, from rumor mill because it's, uh, it's an alternative source and they don't like alternative sources. I, I do believe, but, but I wanted to thank, um, natural wisdom for sharing. That is huge. Getting the word out is huge. And Dr. President says you're nearly 50. Well, you must have the Sammy Hagar gene. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm jiggy with the idea. It might be genes, but I am doing quite a bit to, uh, to help out that process. And, you know, probably the two biggest things I'm doing is the focus on sleep, not more is better, but focus on good quality sleep. And that right there is uh, probably like an hour long discussion. And then, um, and then I uh, eat once a day, I'm intermittent fasting. And I've been doing that for probably about six, seven years now with really great results. I don't do it every single day, but I do it on most days. I can go into more detail if you guys want on some other things that I'm doing. But I wanted to bring this forward. I'm not going to read this whole thing by Morgan Lestrange, but it's it's awesome. You might want to read it. It's great. It says, uh, I'm, re I'm already feeling like a power keg just slammed into my energy system and was feeling some sort of wicked exuberance before I even arrived to my computer to come and watch the week's video. See, what's happening is she's got the Venus-Mars conjunction in Leo in her natal chart, and she was wondering, what does that, how, how is that going to affect my energies? Well, you're already feeling it, Morgan. I mean, it's, it's proof right there that she says, I, I imagine I could be ready to blast into the sky like a firework before the weekend and the energy continues building. Yes. And the energy is going to continue building for you all, all the way through this week. Um, now, because we have this dichotomy, they have that new moon and the opposition with the sun to Pluto. That's going to, it's not going to take away the power powder keg from Mars and Venus in Leo. And the fun that you want to have and the youthful folly and all that sort of stuff. And we'll, we'll get into this, but um, it's not going to take it away, but it's also going to um, bring sort of an inner conflict to a lot of us, like uh, the responsible versus the child, sort of that dichotomy. But we'll get into more detail. And Morgan, you're, um, you're going to feel more of that powder keg, like you said, more than everyone else. You may not even feel the other Uranus T-square. It's so strong in your chart. So anyway, let's get started with the astrology. We're starting to get into this week where we've got the adjustments and you're going to see some of those adjustments. These are in conjuncts, uh, 135 degrees alignment with another planet. <clears throat> so the month of adjustments begins this week and Mercury is going to go into cancer. These are these squares here. These reds are still the remnants of the T square. And by the way, we're talking about the ninth. Um, some people are alleging is uh, like a lights out for the internet. That can match the T square in Uranus because Uranus is technology. A lot of people lump that into Mercury. Mercury's doing fine. Even going into Cancer, it'll be a little bit different, but he's 
he's going direct. Um, and he's got a trine with Jupiter, as you'll see. So very positive thoughts are going to be coming in. Thursday, the 8th, let's drill down day by day. We have, obviously, the next day here, moon is almost ready for the new moon. It's making its last stage before it hits um, the sun in a waning state right now. You have part of the T-square is the main energy here, and it's all doubled up because of Venus and Mars in Leo. Uh, Venus is getting closer to Mars. We'll get there towards the end of our surf week. And this is the youthful folly. It's wanting to just do anything. This is the inner child. This is the fun, the entertainment, the passion. There's a lot of passion here. And it can be love-based too. But, um, but it adds, that passion adds a lot to this T-square. And at the corner, the trap is Uranus. Uranus is where... Well, well, most of us think of like change, insight, uh, the mad scientist, freedom, anti-establishment, all that stuff is Uranus, but it's also technology, you know, uh, Mercury is more, Mercury is not technology per se, like a phone, but it's the communicating that is being done through the phone. So Uranus is the phone. The talking is more Mercury and the words that you're saying. Um, so there's a lot here, but we're going to go through all these other energies as we, as we feed through. The biggest one of the week is right here on Friday, 8.16 p.m. Moon conjunct sun, which means a new moon in Cancer, 18 degrees and two minutes and at the same time, we have an opposition to Pluto. And you can see, so the sun and the moon is at 18 degrees. Pluto is at 25. So they're just within that eight degree orb for an opposition. So this is going to be here all week, this opposition. And the opposition is now a balancing act. And I don't want to take away from the just the value of the new moon itself, but you can see that there's several alignments that are really important with this new moon. So I'm going to talk about the new, about the alignments first. <clears throat> the biggest one is this Pluto. So it's sort of a death and rebirth of the sun, the identity, and your emotional. So you've got a new moon, which is a new cycle anyway, but you've got a death and rebirth with Pluto. So you're balancing those two things out. But Pluto is also sort of the inner inner power, and it's in Capricorn. So it's a very deeply subconscious power, goal-oriented, achievement-oriented, got to get something done, and... The new moon, moon and sun are in cancer, so it's much more nurturing, protecting, um, maybe even lazy, if you will. That's sometimes, not that cancers are lazy, don't, don't worry, I'm not bringing judgment to cancers, but they're able to be a lot easier than other signs. I wouldn't say that, that that's their best attribute. There's other better ones like nurturing, mothering. Moon is home. Moon is in cancer, uh, home to cancer, rules cancer. And so it's the mother. It's the divine mother. Divine mother wants to nurture. And so you've got a new cycle in nurturing, new cycle in helping others, a new cycle. And you can see how uh, if you even include the sun here, with identity and ego and Pluto, oh, it's a really feeling of sacrificing your your ego, sacrificing yourself for others. It's a swayed towards the other sort of orientation in both regards, both just, just this in Cancer, but then also on the other side of the opposition, the Pluto. So... Next, you have a trine over to 
Neptune, and this makes, um, well, first of all, it's extra water. So you've got a water new moon and now a, an easy energy over to more water. And so things just automatically get more emotional, easy to get more emotional, easy to get more transpersonal or mystical, easy to get insights from unknown sources, maybe even erroneous things. That's Neptune illusion. And so that's there. We also have Pluto sextile Neptune, and um, that's going to be here all week. We also have a, a little opportunity, and this is a really important one because you've got the Uranus T-square, you've got the new moon, and they're both connected by an opportunity. This is what I was talking about earlier. And if Uranus is about change and the change of your material life, you've got the new cycle or the new moon also representing something new. So this opportunity is something new, and it might be a cycle of something. It might not just be a static incident, a one-time thing. It might be a start of a new process, a new orientation, a new belief system, that sort of thing. There's so uh, there's a connection between these two major energies. Um, we also have just the need for balance because we've got oppositions. You've got the Venus and Mars op- opposed Saturn, and that's that's a dichotomy right there because this right here, the Venus Mars wants to just play and have fun and disregard consequences and that sort of thing. And Saturn doesn't want to. Saturn wants to work hard and get through obstacles and achieve things, move a higher higher ground. So anyway, you've got that balancing act, and then you've got the Pluto death rebirth inner power thing, and then the uh, sun moon new cycle and Cancer nurturing. And uh, that balancing act. So there's a lot there. And uh, hopefully I gave it justice by talking. There's there's even more energies, but I don't want to confuse things. The biggest things, in my opinion, number one, new moon, new cycle in cancer. Number two, hmm. It's the, it's the T-square itself. It's the whole thing. So Uranus at the, at the helm but it includes the Mars uh, Venus coming together in Leo. That is a powder keg of excitement. So you've got responsibility and then you've got independence and excitement as the next sort of thing. So you can see the dichotomy. Number one is being responsible, nurturing, um, protecting others. And then number two is screw it. Just do whatever you want. Have fun. Um, And then, you know, freedom still. All right. Saturday, the 10th. Here's what I'm going to add. And this is all week as well. Mercury trine Jupiter. So things are very positive, but I'm calling this wise mind because Mercury is the lower logical, rational side of the brain. And Jupiter is the higher end, the philosophical, the higher education the spiritual side of things and the spiritual is accentuated because Jupiter's in Pisces now. And I think, um, most of you guys know Jupiter is in retrograde and actually be coming back into my home sign of Aquarius shortly. So anyway, as, uh, as Venus, um, sorry, as Mercury, continues to progress, this trine is going to stay optimistic with Jupiter. And you've got the whole mind easily synergizing together. You've got Mercury going direct. The only decrement here is Jupiter going um, in, in retrograde. So you're bringing the past with this higher mind, but it's still higher mind and it's still positive and still optimistic. So that's added there. Now, this is the last day of Mercury in Gemini. 
Uh, Mercury is home in Gemini, so going into Cancer will be a lot, a lot different. It's like trying to think in uh, too much, too much water. It's hard to see things, but um, there's no fall here. Mercury in in terms of where he's at when he goes into Cancer, it's um, it's still it's still strong. You're able to think. It's still positive with Jupiter. It, in fact, you've got the sort of a trine in water when when this happens on the 12th. Right now we're on the 11th. This is the 11th. On the 12th, Mercury will be in Cancer. And so your thoughts will turn more nurturing as well. Um, you can see this setup here. So not only is Venus and Mars coming together, but Moon is going to make things even more emotional. This is going to be even more passionate. This is going to dominate right now on the 11th um, in, in terms of feeling. You're going to feel this exuberance, this excitement, anticipation, um, wanting to go do something, high states of energy, even, you know, I wasn't expecting mania until Morrigan talked about hypomania. Um, but yeah, I can see that now in hindsight. I'm probably going to be the folks who are having this in their birth chart. It's happening again, like a, like a return, like a Venus return in Leo. Oof. Yeah, that's going to be a lot more passion there than your average person. Um, so, yeah, Monday the 12th. Here's where Mercury is now in Cancer. So still optimistic. That's Jupiter, still exaggerated. Ju Jupiter brings some excessiveness in there as well. So thoughts of nurturing and protecting. You can see this has remained. So you got an opposition. Sun is not quite yet exactly opposite Pluto. So this is, has some, some growing to do. This energy is actually going to get stronger. It's the sacrificing ego. <laughs> with sun and cancer is um, sacrificing ego to help others. Um, you've got the trine over to Neptune. You've got the sextile from Pluto to Neptune. There's a lot of these uh, outer planets here together in, in alignments. Notice how this T-square, it looks like it's ending. It's not really ending. It's the way my software is set up. After, after four degrees the lines will go away, but the T-square is actually still there. I wanted to point that out. Extreme passion for two days on the 11th and 12th. Extreme passion. And um, with this in conjunct, this is, this is where the adjustments are coming in. So you've got this big, big feeling, emotional passion, having to adjust to fantasy, escapes, um, illusions, but dreams, you know, uh, Neptune is the dreams and maybe you get a precognitive dream and you're adjusting to it. You know, I could totally see that happening, but it works in both ways too. So your dreams are adjusting to your passions. <laughs> so it's, it's works both ways. They work synergistically Tuesday, the 13th, the big news here, this is at uh, 8.32 a.m. Not that that's all that important, but these are exactly in the same piece of sky. You're going to be able to see that on these two days, Mars and Venus together, very close. Not at this time, obviously, this is 8.30 in the morning in central time, but uh, and it's still below the horizon. But that night before and the night after... You're going to see these two very close together. Um, and where they are, they are actually parallel. So they're in the same piece of sky. That is cool. All right, so check that out as well. Feel that energy. It's definitely there, even though it's not our number one energy. Wednesday, the 14th. The, uh, the moon's now in Virgo. That's more responsible uh, parts here of the emotions. Um, and we started off with a, 
uh, new moon in cancer. So the cycle itself is more of responsible. But now on the 14th, July 14th, Virgo is uber responsible. There's more oppositions. There's, um, there's some maturing of this in conjunct with the passion of Venus and Mars. The T-square is still there. This would be probably the last day of the T-square because we're looking at 20, 20 and 21 degrees. And this is at 14. So it's about seven, seven and a half. One more, the one more day, and these will be the T square will be no more. Now that reminds me, I do need to go back up before we proceed on. I need to go to the ninth, so you can write into your calendar. You know, the, the ninth is a big day. It just happens to be this new moon, and this is the day that they're saying is possible for the internet outage, and that makes sense for this you know, big passion, but this death and rebirth of ego in a water sign. So it's very emotional and catastrophic. You know how pessimistic cancers can be, get really moody. So anyway, but the main thing here is the Uranus T-square. I know I've already talked about it, but it makes sense on July 9th. I'm not calling for it. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I find that really interesting. It just happens to be on a new moon in Cancer. Boy, the energy itself just really makes sense. It'll be interesting on the 9th. Let's take our highlighter off and get into the I Ching. We're looking at a yin sandwich. <laughs> Remember we were focusing on yin for so much. We were given, being given a hexagram two. Well, we don't have two anymore. We have 27. But what's interesting is you have, <clears throat> this is like a sandwich. You got the yin bread. I'm sorry, the yang bread and all the, all the meat inside. There's a lot of meat and it's yin. Now, <clears throat> I want to point this out too. You notice the change lines, you put the change in, the yin becomes yang. So the bread got thicker and the same things on the bottom. So it's still a yin sandwich, but you only have two yins when this change is made. I think that I thought that was pretty cool. And just so happens, I put yin sandwich in here when I looked at it, so, you know, it's just the way it's laid out makes, makes sense. Then I looked it up 27 and guess what it means? Nourishment, yin sandwich, nourishment. I thought that was crazy. Nourishment refers to more than just a healthy diet of food. The hexagram represents caregiving as well. This is all cancer. Look at that. Eating properly implies care for oneself. Now, this is a little bit more Virgo. Um, implies care for oneself, providing healthy meals in the home. Implies caring for the family. That's more cancer. The writer of a great book and the composer of an inspiring piece of music also provides nourishment to humanity in general. <clears throat> the most successful people are temperate in eating and drinking, thinking and dreaming. They strengthen the world by nurturing the higher self <clears throat> and then sharing it with others. It's not necessarily sharing certain things like food and drink. It's about sharing your skills, sharing what is what your passions are, uh, but skills and talents mostly by helping others. Pay heed to your thoughts and impulses. <clears throat> that is the Venus and Mars and Leo. So pay heed to your Mercury and Venus and Mars and Leo, ignoring those that undermine a healthy and preserving attitude. A wise person is temperate in the consumption of food and drink. So we're not looking for excessiveness in this area, but I'm sort of I'm sort of sounding like it's the solution and it's not. Remember, this is just the influence. It's feeling like you want to nourish other people. You're feeling probably more like you know, if it's a cancer, new moon and cancer, it's going to feel like you have to or you should nourish others. Like in the, so, so you're we're all going to feel guilt tripped to helping others. Um, and you know, the government knows this stuff too. And so watch out, 
watch out for that. They know that the influence is easy. People are going to be easier guilt trip during this time period. So watch out. We'll talk about the solution here in a second or what actions you should have. But for now, just realize that people are going to want to, I mean, they're already wanting you to be a slave. So they, they know that their time is ripe during this surf week. Okay. That's the hammer home. We got to talk about the lines. Those who earn their daily bread are much happier than those who subsist on the generosity of others. Continuing to be over-reliant on charity brings misfortune. Okay? It doesn't mean you can't have disability payments or retirement income or anything like that or the generosity of others. Um, But just don't be over-reliant on it. That's all it's saying. Line five. Learning to listen brings success. Personal advice, especially from the wise and perceptive person, should be sought out when you face challenging tasks. When, and when someone's advice helps you through a critical situation, never delude yourself into thinking that you succeeded all on your own. Acknowledge some dependence on others or face misfortune when undertaking your next assignment. It's very important here. All right, getting into the solution. See, I made the changes, and you know, you've got extra yang on the uh, the bread, and the meat is smaller, yin, but it's still a yin sandwich. And it, it, that implies, you know, if we're if we're eating this sandwich, we're going to be having a much more doing. So you can see the transition overall in the context of previous surf reports. We had a lot more yin. And now we're moving more and more yang. So now there's more action for us to do. So it's less being, more doing. Centering in truth is hexagram 61. Censoring in truth involves becoming conscious of the relationship between your heart and circumstances of your life. This requires connecting with the fundamental wisdom that is within you, within other people, and with all of nature. So it's going to the center. Um, In my mind, the influence is distracting us. It's almost entirely distracting us out in the real world, all these circumstances around us. And what the I Ching is telling us is to that the answer is within, the authority is within, and we need to be connected to that, uh, the fundamental part of us, the fundamental wisdom and we do have that higher mind, remember. So you, it's in the astrology, but it's obscured from all these other powerful things going on. So this is the solution. It's about, according to the I Ching, it's about uh, going within. It is achieved only by those who cultivate a genuine openness to the way things are and possess a willingness to see into the heart of things rather than to merely looking at appearances. Checking my time really quick. I've got to end this in about uh, 15 minutes. If you are fearful, you will be attacked. If you cloak mysteries with dogma, opportunities for insight will be lost. If you waver in upholding your principles, you will be tested. Yet you are firm and strong. The power of truth can break through even the most stubborn minds, including your own. In a debate, the power to perceive the truth in another's position is essential to winning the contest. That's going to be part of our bonus material for uh, for this week. So we put into our calculator, we put in the new moon, and uh, that brings us to hexagram 53 in the rave and a Gemini. So very thought-based actions. The rave says 53, it's the gate of beginnings. Isn't that crazy? Okay. It is the energy to start a new cycle regardless of the changes that it brings. Isn't this crazy? This is crazy to me. So you have a new moon in cancer in the rave of new beginnings, new cycles. That's that's even more a new cycle feeling. The pressure is to begin and ultimately complete a cycle. This is the energy that is always seeking new beginnings. The pressure rides a wave. It always 
is present. The intensity to start one moment will fall away in the next moment. Wait and see. There is no sense starting what one is not going to finish. Whew, that's a powerful one. So we get into the lines and it's assuredness, the ability to maintain the strength of one's individuality in complex and often awkward situations that ensure continued security and development, the pressure to maintain one's individuality in confusing beginnings. Talk about confusing beginnings is this week because you've got the confusion of Uranus in a T-square. You've got the inner child who wants to just play and have fun on that T-square with the Venus and Mars. And then you've got the responsible nurturing one with the new moon, new cycle in Cancer. It's a tough one, but it's becoming clear. And I'm going to put all this together for you. Uh, just remember when Venus and Mars uh, get together in full, perfect conjunction, same piece of sky. Um, it's the rave for youthful folly. All right. Let's see here. Dreambot. Okay, there we go. This one was an interesting one, and I'm doing this now just because I had the comments earlier. But we have number one is 135.8 surge score. That's pretty high. And even 93 for their number two, unusual, is, is pretty high. Unusual matches, uh, weird, eccentric, that's Uranus. That, that, that whole, um, that whole red is Neptune and Uranus together. And they're both implied in this week's astrology. So the reds are like art design, but unusual and fake. Um, it's, it's about appearances and it might be weird appearances. So either weird art or optical illusion might be here something along those lines. Then the blue is social. It's a gathering together. It's a social occasion, but there's the, the um, guiding and leading that's part of this. So there's followership, but it's, but it's about other people. It's about a group of people and they're, they seem to be responsible for each other. They're inviting, they're guiding, they're leading. Um, I'm considering on showing up. And then, of course, family, like jumping in. So anyway, I don't, it's sort of a confusing bot run to me, but it's important. So always important to be looking at those. All right, ready? Let's get into the uh, the main solution slide. And it's it's a long one, so I've got to hurry this up. Okay, go to interzention.com for latest services, mental health, hypnotherapy, human design, etc. All right, July 8th to the 4th, the main energy is that new moon in Cancer opposed Pluto. And that's going to have you mainly feeling like you need to sacrifice your ego. And so the translation could be the urge to nurture others or the guilt trip feeling to nurture others, or I should be doing this, which involves helping someone else. That's the very, that's that influence. So here's the solution. We had I Ching 61 centering in truth. We had rave mandala 53. It's the gate of the start of the new cycle. That's crazy to me. It's still crazy. So Daryl says Gemini. So we know Geminis are versatile, alert, communicative, intelligent, rational, witty. They can roll with it, agile. So what is the solution in terms of the overlap? Well, I've got two big slides here. I've got a whole nother slide of text. So don't forget that Venus and Mars is converging this week, but it's number two. It's actually number two. You're definitely going to feel that energy though. Um, but it's the main energy is that powerful cancer energy trying to sacrifice ego because it's opposed Pluto. So beware the master manipulators who also know these energies. Venus Mars will have you feeling like um, disbanding your common sense in youthful folly. 
Instead of sacrificing your ego outright, go within deeply. The suggested solutions this week have to do with rational, logical, detailed, wise, deep connection to your fundamental self. To be clear, the solution isn't to second guess everything or to be on guard or even to be looking for threats, but like not being responsible isn't the solution necessarily. Um, it's absolutely must remain out of fear, but also do not leap in impulsive behavior or youthful folly of complete disregard for consequences. So the answer is, it's not like you can't go have fun. It's not like you have to be responsible. It's not like you can't be responsible. None of that even matters. But the point is, is to be is to know and stay in your inner authority this entire week and remain assured during the start of a new cycle. It's the new cycle in cancer. It's a new cycle in nurturing and providing providing nourishment for others. Okay, But that doesn't mean you have to be doing it all the time. Sometimes it is. You need to... um, you need to start something fun. Do something that you absolutely love. But if you stay there and you stay in this highs of enjoyment, there could be a problem there. You've got to stay in your inner authority. And by inner authority, what I mean is human design. We have an inner authority. And it's the most important, in my opinion, most important part of human design is learning the inner authority It's not in your head. It's either the spleen, the solar plexus, or the um, or the sacral, or some people don't even have Ravi doesn't don't even have an inner authority. So you have to know what to do in the case of action, and you got to stay true to that inner authority. All right, next slide. I have more. I have more solution. Uh, I have to open it up now. Hold on. It's because I zoomed in and that took away my ability to go to the next slide. Here's the next slide. All right. Sacrificing too much of self will produce resentment. Hidden potential behind possible burnout. Not nurturing enough of others produces isolation or anxiety. If you start noticing new resentment, ease off the service to others for a period. If you notice isolation or anxiety, beef up your service to others. We need this continuum in perfect balance for the new cycle. I can't hammer this one home enough. Talked about the two different sides of the continuum, you need to be in these goalposts of service to self, service to others. Being balanced truly in that is a, is an art. And, um, it's important to not be too much onto one side. So here's a couple bonus items for you. Notice your ability to perceive the truth in another's position. That's sort of like sacrificing self. No, it's not. It's not sacrificing because you're not having to, just because you understand the other person's viewpoint and their, their truth in another's position, it doesn't mean you have to agree with it. It doesn't mean you have to do anything about it. It doesn't mean you have to sacrifice yourself or your position. It just means you understand their, their position, their truth. Um, a lot of us don't do that because we're afraid it's going to give them power. And it, it doesn't. Knowing it, it actually gives you more power when you understand and perceive the other person's position. Ultimate success resides here. And then decide your karmic face, fate based on what to do with this information. Act within your highest values instead of being driven by guilt of another's emotional experience. Bonus number two, notice how youthful folly and the need to nurture, these feel like thrills, the need for thrills, the need for a quick high, 
the need for passion, the need for fun and entertainment, or the need for being responsible, or I should do it, like listening to your mom's voice from the past saying, you should wash the dishes. So feeling guilt tripped by this might be the feeling. But they both, uh, so the youthful folly and the nurturing energies want to pull you from your inner authority. The deep secret about this week is that you'll have a hard time making substantial mistakes. Why? Because the biggest passion, um, even the moon is accentuating that passion this week on two of the days, is the rave of youthful folly, which means you get a free pass. You you don't have to worry about the, all the consequences. And um, it doesn't mean that you intend to just do everything wrong because you don't have to pay for it. But this is why I'm saying that you're going to have a hard time making substantial mistakes this week. And that's because of the youthful folly rave, rave thing. But it doesn't mean a free pass to do everything. You don't throw caution to the wind completely, but you don't overthink everything either. So here's what you do. Stay in the deeper you. Stay between these goalposts. If you get frozen in confusion about what to do, tell yourself there are no mistakes, especially this week. There are no mistakes. And then breathe, tap into your inner authority, and that's in rave mandala we we humans love to try to think through our action and try to be thoughtful about our action some of it's good based in good intention but your inner authority is never in the head and in the mind and thoughts it's down in your gut area it's down in your solar plexus but not the same for everybody you have to know what it is and how to how to read it and it will never let you down. It will never direct you erroneously into wrong action. All right. I have to go. It's nine minutes before my next session. So have a wonderful week. I know this was a lot, but um, but worth it, everybody. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a delicate dance and it's gonna be a balancing act. So Enjoy it, but mostly follow your inner authority, your intuition. It, it won't it won't drive you wrong. And we'll see you next week. Take care, everybody. Bye.